What a gorgeous night for game four of this series as his homestand rolls on and the Diamondbacks and Dodgers face off. And we say welcome inside. Joe Davis with Orr Hershiser. Alana Rizzo joins us in just a moment. So the Dodgers took the first two games of this series. The offense was good. They had 15 runs in those two games, but Arizona bounces back yesterday with a 3-1 win. The common theme the last two games has been short outings from starters and the bullpen being taxed. And two different reasons we're getting the short outings from starters. Maeda, really the effectiveness, the command is not there. The control's there, but the command's not there. And then with Rich Hill, the blister problem arises again. Maeda's just got to get a little bit better in the strike zone, a little better, more quality pitches on the corners, maybe even a little bit more movement on the fastball. And Rich Hill, we revisit this topic again. Just came back from the 10-day DL, and all of a sudden, and he is back on it just a day later. Very frustrating for him and for the Dodgers. But the silver lining to those two clouds and only seven innings from the starters are the relievers. This is a bullpen that hasn't given up a home run. This is a bullpen that is throwing strikes. They have the least amount of walks of any bullpen in the National League, and they are striking people out at an accelerated rate. They are fantastic, and they are really the core of this team right now. For our daily update on this roster, we go down to Alana Rizzo. Well, guys, because of the Rich Hill DL stint, we, of course, had to make an addition to this roster, and that addition is infielder and outfielder Rob Segedin, who was hitting the ball very well down in AAA, making his major league debut of the season here. Already right in the fire playing first base today. Dave Roberts saying he likes his versatility, the ability to play the infield and the corner outfield spots. Another update for you, obviously, Logan Forsythe. That hamstring is just fine. He's starting today and leading off. And he and the Dodgers. Alano will face Robbie Ray, who's been very good against LA in his career. Brandon McCarthy counters for the Dodgers. We've got first pitch on the other side of this break.
Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Try the double jack combo for just $4.99, only at Jack in the Box. Good to see Logan Forsyth back in there tonight after the day off yesterday with a tight hamstring on Saturday as the Dodgers try to take three of four from Arizona. The coolest night of the series, 63 degrees as Paul Goldschmidt and the Diamondbacks get ready to come to bat with his starting lineup brought to you by Honda. A.J. Pollock is at the top, then it's David Peralta. Goldschmidt hits third. In the middle, Jake Lamb, Yasmani Tomas, and Daniel Descalso. Chris Owen starts it short, and Jeff Mathis does the catching for Robbie Ray. And against Brandon McCarthy, who is off to a good start, winning both of his starts, going six innings in both of his starts, and that included Oral, six shutout innings against the defending champs in Chicago last Wednesday. He's thrown the ball really, really well, and I'll tell you what, the sinker has been outstanding. The fastball goes two different directions. The two-seamer sinks, and the cutter, of course, can go the other way, and the curveball has gotten sharper and sharper. The most impressive thing about Brandon right now is the height of his pitches. He is keeping Keeping the ball down. Runners get on. When nobody's on base, they're hitting about 318 off them. But when somebody gets on, 059, and that's a lot of ground ball double plays. Closed captioning tonight brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. Dodgers took the opener Friday night 7 1. They won game two 8 4. And the Diamondbacks bounce back with a 3-1 win yesterday afternoon behind Taiwan Walker. Came out after the game. Walker was pitching through some serious lower back stiffness and had his best outing of the year. A.J. Pollock climbs in. Brandon McCarthy comes home and off we go with strike one. It has been a rough start to the season for Pollock was hitless in this series and is two for his last 32. The 0-1, nothing in two. From a Notre Dame star, A.J. Pollock, trying to come back from that bad elbow injury last year. 29 years old, now in his sixth big league season. McCarthy bounces it in there. It's one and two. You see already Brandon keeping the ball down with all three of those pitches. The bottom dropping out of the first two two seamers. Starting the game against A.J. Pollock. He fouls it off and it's still one and two. McCarthy hitting 94 with a fastball there. It's been consistently 93 or 94 so far this year for the first time since before his Tommy John. Which he underwent in April of 2015. McCarthy to Pollock. That one just misses two and two. That was a cutter and just off the edge. If it was a two seam he probably takes it for strike three. Fantastic location. See what he goes to on 2 2. Sit softly up along third with the two seam. We'll do the 2 2 again. I missed his spot completely, but it just shows you the quality of the pitch. The sink on that ball, barely touch it. Trying to go in, ends up away on the corner, but anything with that kind of movement, throw it anywhere on the plate. So Dave Roberts has liked about Brandon McCarthy so far the way he's just attacked with that two seam fastball. And off to this 2 0 start, giving the Dodgers good length. Six innings in both starts. And the right hander's home with another 2 2. And the count goes full. David Peralta do next. Part of the top scoring offense in baseball over the first two weeks of the season. Here's a payoff. And Pollock flips it foul. And really the start to the season is what carried Arizona to that number. They average about seven runs per game over the first week. But less than three per game the last week. 
And that has corresponded with them leaving the hitter friendly chase field. And going on this road trip through San Francisco and now L.A. Ninth pitch of the A.B. and Pollock singles to center. It's quite a way to start the game for the Arizona center field. We go back to last year and Brandon McCarthy has not given up a hit in his last five starts in the first inning. So this is a rarity for him to get into the stretch here in the first inning. David Peralta climbs in. He like A.J. Pollock enters the game without a hit in this series. And tails this one over the outside corner strike one. It's McCarthy's 12th major league season. With his sixth team. That includes a stint with Arizona. So the Diamondbacks for all of 2013 and the first half of 2014. Before the Diamondbacks traded him to the Yankees. Fouled off and it's 0-2. With that guy on deck, that's what makes this at bat at the plate so important. You don't want to pitch to that guy in traffic. With well, the runner at first and nobody out in the first inning, McCarthy home with an 0-2. Runner takes off, pitches outside, throw is on the money to get him. Yasmani Grandal gets A.J. Pollock for the first out. Arizona scurries for the phone to check to see if they want to look at the replay on this one. Yasmani did an outstanding job and Corey Seager reaching for the tag. Looks like it gets there in time. I think the game will move on. Jerry Naren right there. Acting bench coach Ron Garden higher away from the team right now. And you were right, they play on. So the base is wiped clear on the count one and two on Peralta. McCarthy back home. Softly hit against the shift. This is going to be an infield single. So Peralta rolls one. To the vacated left side of the infield. Yeah, McCarthy, a guy who early on in his career bought into analytics, early into some of the Sabre numbers and philosophies. He'd be one of the first to admit that you have to live with those against the shift. So, with one out and a runner at first, here's Paul Goldschmidt. Strike one. Those infield singles against the shift are really like the new blooper. You know, you don't want to position an outfielder where the blooper falls in. You've got to play yeah. legitimate defense. And so when you have the shift, which is your legitimate defense because of data, you just got to live with that. Just misses one and one. When McCarthy was in Arizona, the guy that he was next to in the clubhouse was Paul Goldschmidt. The lockers right next to one another. Said Goldschmidt's locker was immaculate. Brings him a 1 1. Peralta runs on a strike. Grandall throws from his knees. He comes out of the bag and he's out number two. Forsyth kept the tag on him. And both outs have come on the bases here in the first. Well, Yasmani saw the jump and said, I don't have time to get to my feet. I got an attempt this from my knees. And boy, Forsyth did a nice job holding the tag on. And this is one of the things that fielders have learned because of replay. In the olden days, before replay, that's probably still safe. But now, it's an out the second time in as many days 
The Diamondbacks have had a man pop off of the bag and get tagged out at second. And now McCarthy, who's given up two singles in this first inning, is a strike away from getting out of it. It was Jake Lamb yesterday that just barely popped off of the bag. Two balls and two strikes on Goldschmidt. To the naked eye, hard to see, but like you said, with replay, you can't get away with much anymore. David, you can argue the case all you want, but film don't lie. The 2-2, that's low. Goldschmidt, two hits in yesterday's game, knocked in a run in the 3-1 Diamondbacks win. A payoff pitch is low, and he's walked him. Goldschmidt, one of the leaders in walks across baseball the last few years, and he keeps this inning Baseball alive with the first McCarthy free pass of the night. So all three have reached against McCarthy. But the Diamondbacks were the man at first, that's all. And two out because of the two caught stealing. Jake Lamb stands in. Grandall sets the target low and away. Here comes McCarthy with a strike. Dodgers have done a good job on Lamb in this series. He's one of six. 0 for 2 last night. That snapped a 10 game hitting streak for him, which was tied for the longest in the National League. the game's best young hitters had a monster first half last year led the National League in slugging before fading in the second half pulls a grounder to first Rob second and gets involved right away in his first game back and a scoreless first inning despite some traffic Logan Forsyth ready to lead off the bottom of the first for the Dodgers when you come back. Lead off the Dodger first inning in the starting lineup brought to you by Honda has Corey Seager hitting behind Forsythe, then Justin Turner. And with the left hander on the mound, Puig is in the cleanup spot. Grandall hits fifth. Hernandez starts for Peterson in center. Second and starts for Gonzalez at first, and Scott Van Slyke is in left. Hard throwing left hander, Robbie Ray, 25 years old. From Brentwood, Tennessee, and is coming off a really nice performance. Six and two thirds shutout innings on Tuesday at San Francisco. He misses up with the first one on Forsyth. Big time fastball, uses a slider to put people away and also get back into counts. Even in the count, sometimes you'll see the curveball. Back to back fastballs that miss, and it's 2 0. Oh. 
And you get kind of a snapshot right away of what Ray is all about. The velocity. High strikeouts but high walks as well. Control a bit of a problem for him. Three and zero. Oh. You hear the grunting. That's something that he added last year. Said he started doing it. Felt good and then did a little research and got some scientific backing that it helps. And a four pitch walk to Forsyth to start his night. Well it can help you with accuracy and it can help you with velocity because when you're exhaling you relax a little bit more. And so the tightness kind of leaves your body and especially your upper body with that breath going out. You hear a lot of tennis players doing it. Yeah. Zach Granke does it. Yep. And he said that it's good enough for Granke, it's good enough for him. Corey Seeger now. Only left hander in the Dodger lineup. Swings and misses at a slider. Strike one. Corey's reached seven times in the three games in this series. Four hits and three walks. Again, the catcher Mathis sets away. And again, he throws the slider. Seeger lays off this time. Corey's parents still in town. Taken in this entire series. We're hoping that it'll match up sometime to be able to make a trip to see him and Kyle in one West Coast swing. Up along first and foul, and it's one and two. Kyle, of course, the third baseman for the Mariners. Had a trip last year where it lined up perfectly, where Kyle was playing in Anaheim and Corey was at home with the Dodgers. Their brother Justin in the Mariners minor league system. Forsyth at first and a one two from Robbie Ray to Corey Seeger back to the slider to get him for the first out. Justin Turner comes Justin up and we Turner. look at the Land Rover performance spotlight. He has seven doubles already. That leads the National League. Hitting 372. And if you go back to last season, he has a hit in nine straight games here. Justin hits like he's in a rocking chair. Never seems like he's out of balance. He has a lot of movement in his swing, but it is so coordinated that he times it up perfectly. Ray's first one bounces in there and goes to the five hole of Mathis to allow Forsyth to move into scoring position. Mathis read this one wrong completely. You see how he rises up. The tailgate came up and the ball went down. Probably will be a wild pitch, but. The big league catcher is going to say, I should have had that one. And it is a wild pitch. Now the 1 0. Low to Turner. Two balls and no strikes. We mentioned a stat in pregame on our hit back to the studio that the Dodgers in their losses have averaged one run. They've been shut out twice in a couple of two run games. Be nice to break on top here. Averaging almost eight runs a game in the wins. Raise 2 0. And Turner can't lay off two and one. Stu Surewater, the home plate umpire. Turner was just upset that he didn't ask down to Paul Emil at first, and that's all batters ever want typically in those check swings is just ask for help. Ask down the line to the guy that has a better view.
Rays 2-1 is ball three. It's his ninth start already against the Dodgers, even though he's only in his fourth year with Major League time. And he has been really good against L.A. Sub three earned run average. The Dodgers in the eight games against him, hitting 182. Some of the best numbers of any left-hander against the Dodgers. See if Turner gets one to drive. Instead, he takes ball four. And the second walk of this first inning issued by Ray. Semi-intentional walk right there. A lot of respect for Justin Turner. Sets up a double play. But it brings up Puig. Right now, there is an energy in this ballpark every time number 66 comes to the plate. And it's been a while since there's been this much buzz around him for the right reasons. Still a tiny sample size. It's only 13 games. But encouraging signs here in the start to his season. Bats with two on and one out in the scoreless first inning. And in the first one from Ray, he takes a fastball for strike one. Going into spring training, coming out of spring training, the narrative and the speculation about Yasiel Puig is how much rope are the Dodgers going to give him? You know, does he need to get off to a fast start? Well, people said, you know, oh, probably two, three months. They'll see how he does. But he has gotten off to that fast start, and that has died down. The 1 pitch. Checks his swing and a fastball and fouls it off 0-2. He is the only Dodger that has started all 14 games this year. Platoon immune at this point. That was not the case last year after the Dodgers acquired Josh Reddick. We well, went down to AAA at that point, and when he came back up, he hit exclusively against left-handed pitching. Ray has him in a tough spot. The 0-2. Outside, ball one. Pretty much all of his success so far this year, though, has come against right-handed pitching. Typically in his career, pretty even splits lefty-righty. So far this year, not even close. He's 2 of 17 against lefties. Near 500 against righties. The one two. Tweak swings, hammers the ball to straight away center that Pollock drifts under. Forsyth will advance to third. Allowed out number two here in the first. You know, it's a three strike game, and the more Yasiel Puig has. Exceptional Measure at bats, nine. quality yes, at bats Mike after Randall. getting two strikes, the more and more you're going to feel like you want to trust him in big situations. Right there, falling behind 0 and 2, but still working the count and getting a pitch that really was a mistake and hit it well. To Yasmani Grandal with runners at the corners and two gone. Breaking ball, it's low, ball one. Now these have been the situations that have differentiated the wins and the losses. Dodgers in the wins hitting 286 with runners in scoring position. In the losses, they're two for 31 with men in scoring position. And all with a first inning opportunity against Robbie Ray, who pumps a 1 0. That's in there, 1 and 1. Forsyth at third and Turner at first. They both walked. And on 1-1, one, one, the Dodger catcher, Grandall, takes ball two. 
Dodger offense knows they've struggled against lefties. They have to answer questions around their locker after every game that they lose to a lefty, and especially when the offense fails. So, in this first inning, first and third, two out, Yasiel squared it up. They didn't get an RBI out of it, but they'd like to change the momentum, not have to deal with that. I think there's more satisfaction now when the Dodgers beat a lefty than when they just beat a right-handed starter. And a little bit of relief that you don't have to talk to the media and make more excuses and grind out what's happening against left-handers. Going to have ample opportunity, not just Ray tonight, but in both games against Colorado this week, left-handed starters. The 2-1. Grandal with a wicked cut comes up empty, two and two. Kyle Freeland goes tomorrow night. Tyler Anderson on Wednesday. When you see that much bat speed and a hitter miss the ball by that much, that tells you how late and deep that movement was. Because if the movement just fools them, you see hitters' swings kind of break down and their bat almost slows down to the speed of the pitch. But when they swing that full, sharp pitch. Hard hit to short and Owings and the inning is over. Couple of base runners for both teams in the first but no damage on either side. Temperature down in the low 60s at game time. Coolest night of the season here at Chavez Ravine. Dodgers and Diamondbacks game four of this series. Dodgers trying to take three of four from Arizona before the first place Rockies come in tomorrow. That feels weird coming out. First place Rockies, nine and five. Colorado taking three of four from San Francisco over the weekend. They're in L.A. now on their off day, and we'll start that mini-series tomorrow. Diamondbacks a notch above the Dodgers, and the Rockies a notch above them. A bit upside down in the early going in the West. Osmani Tomas leads off this inning against McCarthy, and he cuts one in there for strike one. Brandon's made one start against his former team. Last July, fired six shutout innings at Chase Field against Arizona. Nothing in two. Did you get any uh, any extra juice going against your former teams? You do a little bit, for sure. You uh, have certain guys you really can't wait to pitch against because you really know their holes and they're not very good at adjusting. And then there's other guys you uh, you get up for because you know it's going to be a challenge. He gets Tomas with a tailing fastball. His first punch out. Now Brandon three, was Scalzo. not very good as a Diamondback. 
when eight and 21 had an ERA around five and some injury problems while he was there there was some shoulder issues and the Descalso up for the first time tonight with the bases empty and one gone in the second. Just in ball one. There was also a scary moment while Brandon was in Arizona. He had a seizure stemming from an even scarier moment which was when he took the line drive off of his head the previous year. One and one. That was in September of 2012 when he was pitching for Oakland against Anaheim and Eric Ibar lined the ball back at him fractured his skull. He had a brain contusion there was bleeding in his brain two and one and had to undergo emergency surgery and found out afterwards that it was life saving surgery. They drained the blood relieved the pressure that his brain was experiencing a two hour operation that saved his life two balls and two strikes on Descalso. So when you talk about the shoulder issues he's had and the Tommy John surgery he went through the yips that he dealt with last year puts that into perspective when he nearly lost his life on the mound. He's home with a 2 2 and that's up full count. Well, the guys that are surviving cancer that are playing in the big leagues they'll tell you that it's not pressure to have bases loaded no out it's pressure when you're talking to your doctor and you're finding out if the cancer is in remission. Back to back K's to open the second for McCarthy. All three of the pitches that he has working tonight he could Short tell the hitters the they're coming and they'd still be hard to hit. The breaking ball is sharp. The two different fastballs, the two seamer and the cutter, are both moving late. Faces a guy now with a seven game hitting streak. It's Chris Owings. Where's the smile of a guy who's been hitting? McCarthy has a curve back up on him, but it finds his own. Strike one. Other than two. So after a bit of a clunky first inning for McCarthy, where the first three reached against him, two singles and a walk. Going right through the heart of this order. One ball and two strikes on Owings after he struck out Tomas and Descalso. The next one again backs up two and two. Chris Owings, 25 years old, from South Carolina, former first round pick, former top prospect, the Diamondback system. Now in his fifth major league season, and on two two, he pulls it sharply to third. Turner grabs it and gets him. A couple of strikeouts and some stellar defense from Justin Turner. Kike Hernandez ready to lead off the bottom of the second after this.
Stadium. Welcome you inside our broadcast booth, Joe and Oral. And I think it's safe to say so far, you look at the rotation, Kent Maeda has not been as good as people would have hoped. Obviously the issues with Rich Hill. But there's something developing here with Brandon McCarthy who is exceeding expectations. Came in here with two outings of six innings each. He's at a 1-5 ERA. And tonight he's right there where he's picking up on the same place. I tell, his movement is really exceptional yeah. right now. And I'll tell you what, this Dodger offense... The bottom of the order one of these three guys has got to get on because then you get Brandon McCarthy's spot in the order out of the way and maybe you clear the decks for the next inning or you set up an inning right here. Here's the one one to Kike and Ray throws a fastball outside two and one. So Hernandez starting his sixth game this year Sagadin who's on deck starting his first and then Van Slyke starting his third. So Dave Roberts getting some guys some opportunities with the left handed pitcher on the mound. It was a natural opportunity to give Adrian Gonzalez a day of rest. He's all of 11 in his career against Ray. Who strikes out Hernandez to open the second. All three of the guys that are coming up this inning have minor league options but they are here in the big leagues because they earned it. So these guys all three of them could have been in triple A this year. Rob Sagan and just arriving today. But the other two have been here for a while. Great start for him in Oklahoma City. You see the numbers there. And he goes after a Ray fastball. He's laid on it. Strike one. It's a little bit different this year. Got in even better shape this offseason. Changed his swing some as well. That's in and it's one and one. It's been a month this offseason here in Los Angeles working with Justin Turner. He said he was hitting the ball on the ground too much. Wanted to get better at elevating it. Who better to help it? One and two. As often happens though I think when you're working with one guy and trying to emulate one guy he said basically he just copied Justin Turner at first over time made it his own swing. And he starts his 2017 big league slate with a base hit to the left. Rob Sagadin with a one out single against Ray. Field, number 33. The change in the body, the change in the swing, toiling in the minor leagues for years. And it's not that you don't work hard when you're a minor leaguer and you want to get to the big leagues, but once you get the taste of the big leagues, it's amazing how your focus and your dedication on a daily basis in the offseason all of a sudden sharpens. And he looks sharp. Does it also make the minors more of a grind? It does make the minors more of a grind, but once you get a taste, that's what they do with big league spring training camp. Once you get called up in September, or if you just make it on your own in the regular season, boy, that taste and the vision of being around big league teammates and how they go about their business to stay at the big leagues and to be successful, it really defines who you want to be and gives you a new level of how hard you want to work. Scott Van Slyke took ball one. Robbie Ray back downhill with ball two. Scott Van Slyke went through that same transition early in his career. Got stronger, lost a little weight, really started to focus on, I don't want to be just a big leaguer that's kind of a 4A player. I want to be a complete big leaguer and reach my full potential. On 2-0, he takes low. Three balls and no strikes against Ray, who's already walked a pair. Scott is 30 years old now. He's in his sixth major league season. Hoping to stay healthy. Hoping those wrist and back issues are behind him because when this guy is healthy, he can really hit. Ball four and the third, Robbie Ray Walk. Well, it really has been the sad thing about somebody like Scott Vance Lake when he had that turnaround mentally about his body and his career, all of a sudden the injuries started creeping up. The sad thing about Rich Hill going on the DL today. The life and career of Rich Hill has completely turned around. The big contract, the great family, and now he's fighting through the blister issues when really everything should be looking up. And as 
should have been expected. Most of Dave Roberts' session with the media today was spent discussing Rich Hill and the plan moving forward. And right now, there really is no solution. If there was a solution, there wouldn't be this situation right now where he is on the DL for the second time in as many starts with that blister flare-up. McCarthy bunts perfectly, third base side. Goldschmidt's only play is the first, and it's off of the glove of Descalso. Everybody's safe, and the bases are loaded. Outstanding execution from Brandon McCarthy, getting this ball towards third with first and second. That's the direction you want the bunt. And then that execution leads to them having to field the ball, and they mess that part up. So the Dodgers are in business. Loaded up for Logan Forsythe. Who walked his first time and in this series has reached in six of his eight plate appearances. Golden opportunity against Robbie Ray here in the second for Logan Forsythe who takes strike one. Second ends at third and a one out single Van Slyke walk and McCarthy reaches on what is ruled E4. Sacrifice E4. And a one strike two. Very hard guy to strike out especially when he's facing a lefty. Number one in the big leagues if you go back to the beginning of last year in percentage of swings that make contact against the lefty almost 60 percent of the time when he moves the bat against the lefty he makes contact big league average is only about 30. Rezo two just upstairs ball one. Ray pitched around a pair of base runners in the first inning getting Yasiel Puig the line to center, getting Asmani Grandal to ground is short. Although he was far from inducing soft contact, both of those balls were hit well, just happened to be at people. Well, the base is jammed here in the second, a 1-2 to Logan Forsythe. Two balls, two strikes. More balls than strikes so far. Dodgers need to make them pay for that ratio. Now the 2-2. Two -two. Forsyth digs it out in the air to center. Pollock's got it. Here comes Sagadin. Throw to the plate, not in time, and an RBI sack fly from Logan Forsyth brings home Rob Sagadin. One nothing. What an outstanding piece of hitting to take a breaking ball that should have ended up in the dirt. Break down your legs, bend the knees, get under this ball and hit in the air. This should have been a double play for most swings. Look at Logan go down, break the back leg down and get under that. So one nothing Dodgers in front and two on with two out for Seager. Ray went heavy slider the first time Seager was up there. That's what he goes to here for strike one. Oh, Seager fouls it off himself. I'm not sure how he even made contact in a pitch that was bearing in on him, and it's 0-2. It's the same place that the breaking ball starts, so he commits like this could be breaking ball. He's not getting out of the way because he's trying to keep his upper half thinking that could be on the outer half of the plate. What he swung and missed at his first at bat ends up a fastball in off the plate, and boy, it almost, he almost undressed himself. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now raise 0 2. Good stop by Mathis. Ball one. Robbie Ray, native of Tennessee, originally drafted by Washington back in 2010, and then has been traded twice. He was traded to the Tigers for Doug Fister before he made his major league debut. And pitched in a few games for Detroit. They traded him to Arizona and the three way deal that sent Didi Gregorius to the Yankees. The one two. Two and two. The Seagers laid off a pair of sliders in the dirt. The day that that second deal was announced, Tigers to D backs, his mom tweeted out a photo of one of his very first Little League teams. He was the Diamondbacks. Now he's playing for the real thing. His 2 2. Seeger fouls one down the left field line. Well, the basic sequence now is there's the high fastball up and in. A lot of confidence to throw the breaking ball because that's what he got him with in the first at bat when he struck him out. Overthrows a fastball. The count's full and the runners will get a head start. So after Seeger had fallen behind 0 and 2, he's now worked at full. And Van Slyke from second. And McCarthy from first will be running with a pitch. There they go. And Seeger grounds it foul. Looks like Ray has a kind of a get over breaking ball and then one that he likes to try and put hitters away with. It's a lot bigger. Some people classify it as a curve. It almost looks like he's throwing the same exact pitch, just has a little different philosophy with it. Running the bank on the Forsyth sack fly. Two on with two out. Ray's ready for another 3 2 to Corey Seeger. Strike three. Got him with a fastball. But the Dodgers get one to begin the scoring as second in comes home on Forsyth sack fly. Rockies and the first 40,000 fans in attendance get a Dodger branded knit cap from Security Benefit. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. I can't wait to get one of those knit caps. They were good looking. 
not just a basic blue and white. There's some red in there. It's a good looking cap. Uh huh. On a night like this, it's borderline cap weather, even. You know, by the end of the night, perhaps, low 60s to begin. Dodgers got a run in the bottom of the second on Logan Forsyth. Sacrifice fly to center. Brought home Rob Saget in. And Brandon McCarthy back out there to pitch the third. You can leave the hoodie at home that night. You're going to get a cap. Right. Jeff Mathis started the first game of the series. He shares time at catcher with Chris Iannetta and Chris Herman and starts the finale as well. Thirteen year big league veteran that has been around. The Angels for the largest chunk of his career also in Toronto for a while and then Miami. Ball one from McCarthy. He's never been a great hitter but known for his leadership. Learned a lot from Mike Sosha while he was with the Angels. Former Dodger catcher. He's a pretty good catcher. Yeah he had a pretty good. Uh, Pretty good angle on watching him. Long term relationship. He had a great outside corner. Here's a 1 1. And Mathis lifts a fly ball to Puig and right. For on the ball. Jesse O developing a little side saddle style out there in right field. We've seen four or five balls caught. A little off Robin center. Ray. You okay with that? Yeah, as long as he catches it. <laughs> <laughs> One gone, Robbie Ray to the plate. Two hits and four ABs so far. McCarthy to his counterpart was strike one. Diamondbacks started this season six and one. It was their best seven game start in their two decades. But they've gone two and four since in the road trip through San Francisco and here in L.A. Quickly 0 and 2. Brandon attacking the opposing pitcher. A little different than Robbie Ray who's hitting who uh, took 27 pitches to get through last inning. A jam shot that'll drift foul. Ray's got 49 pitches. Brandon's got a chance to get through this inning. They'll have a whole inning more than him and be at the same pitch count. That's the third Brandon McCarthy strikeout and the second out in the third. So he's retired now six in a row after the first three reached against him single single walk and two of those three were wiped off of the bases by Osmani Grandal caught stealings. A.J. Pollock led off the game with a single and he was one of the guys erased by Grandal. Osmani's got a pretty good ratio going this year on caught stealings. Caught five out of nine guys. He appreciates those guys sliding in hard to beat his first tag and get off the bag so I can get a caught stealing. <laughs> Takes a peek at Pollock, make sure his attention's on the mound, not on the signs. And it's 0 2. Haven't you noticed this year how Yasmani's mood is so much better? You can just tell he's healthy. He's happy around the cage. He's got a pep in his step. Swinging the bat good, calling good games back there, throwing the ball well. You can see it in his personality as he is around the ballpark before the game. And another strikeout from McCarthy. He's got four and has settled in after a bit of a bumpy start.
three coming up in time for the Coors Light cold hard facts. We've kind of touched on the issues with runners in scoring position and losses, and this is how it's manifested. Close to eight runs per game in the wins. Feast or famine, I suppose, averaging one run in the six losses. We had to double check that. It didn't seem possible that it'd be that low. Justin Turner starts the third for the Dodgers and gets buzzed by a fastball, 1-0. So in the six losses, you have uh, two ones, two twos, and two zeros. Two zeros. Three one last night, the loss. That's a strike, one and one. They've had 70 runners in scoring position in the wins. They've only had 31 runners in scoring position in the losses. So less opportunities and definitely a lower batting average in the risk. Here's the 1-1 one pitch. Turner digs it out of there. Owings it short. Wow. Number 66. Yassiel Puig. Puig crushed the ball to center his first time. It was caught by Pollock just shy of the track. So we talked yesterday, Oral, about the first 12 games of his career, how the numbers compared to the first 12 games of this season. That's adjusted to the first 13 games of his career. Four home runs, 10 RBIs to begin his career. Four home runs, 11 RBIs, and that number of games to open this season. Some of the other numbers, some of the slash lines not as good, but the homers and the RBIs better than that earth-shattering debut in June of 2013. Third of the National League in RBIs this year. Takes one in the corner. It's one and one. There's a different vibe about Yasiel now. Not only coming from him, but around him. It just seems people are starting to trust him a little more. Some of the antics when he does something really well or poorly are starting to die down. Two and two. Really becoming a more focused and disciplined professional. That's not a great uh, vision. It's not a great image there while you say great. I know. Right, <laughs> as, I, right. right as I went there, I mean, I, I don't trust him now. Yeah. I know more. <laughs> Here's a two two. And Puig takes ball three outside. Now it's one thing to handle failure. It's another thing, and this isn't just for Yasiel. This can be said for anybody in any line of work. How do you handle success? How does Puig handle this good start? One gone, and the base is empty in the third. He's worked it full against Robbie Ray. The Dodgers in front, one nothing. Now the payoff. And he takes ball four. That's a great walk. He wants to hit so bad because it yes, feels Bonnie so Brando. good right now. The rhythm, seeing the ball. And so, yes, he was disappointed to walk, but he knows that was the right thing to do. And like we've talked about, as impressive as the home runs and the runs batted in have been, more encouraging has been the overall at bat quality and the ability to take those borderline pitches. Now, Smani Grandal, the man at first and one gone. Puig runs on a strike, throw down. Got it. <laughs> You're up here trying to hide a laugh, but I don't know you need to hide it. Oh, yes. my gosh. Okay, here's right about where I start laughing. <laughs> now this part two. So we <laughs> caught trying to steal second. Grandall takes ball one. Someone in our truck just said, they're not reviewing it. <laughs> I wonder who said that. Could that have been Mike Levy? It probably was. Very few people in there talk to us. Two and one. That's not true. 
Why did I give a speech by, <laughs> about the antics are dying down? <laughs> Famous last <laughs> words. Grandal pops one and foul ground at first. And he'll live to see another day in a 2 2. We should just leave a ISO camera on Yasiel the whole game. Yeah. Just run it down in the lower left corner of the screen during the game. Not that everything that he's doing is good or right, but it's just about all of it is entertaining. <laughs> it sure is. Ray gets Grandall swinging to retire the side and able to face the minimum thanks to the caught stealing. Brought to you by the Ram 1500 Rebel. Experience the power and toughness of Ram at your local dealer. And by True Green, America's number one professional lawn care company. Start today, live life outside. It was today, four seasons ago, that Clayton Kershaw reached 1,000 strikeouts in his career, getting San Diego's Yonder Alonzo. And became the second fastest Dodger to reach 1,000 career strikeouts. The fastest, Hideo Nomo, 10 years earlier. Kershaw right now, 1,940. That places him fourth all time in Dodger history. And he's got a ways to go to catch the top three. They're all kind of grouped together in the mid 2000s. Don Sutton, the all time leader, 2,696 in a Dodger uniform. Drysdale second, Koufax third at 2,396. David Peralta takes strike one to open the fourth. Sutton's total that leads the Dodgers came in his 16 years here, but his overall total, more than 3,500 Ks, is seventh all time in baseball. Peralta taps one, Seeger across his body throws, and they get him, saying that Sagadin kept his foot on the bag. Peralta had an infield single his first time with his swinging bunt in that same direction and nearly got another here. Let's take a look at our Carl's cam replay right here. Corey Seager ranging to his right and boy Segedin does a nice job stretching out keeping the toe on the base to record the out. Wow. Upon first watch there, I wasn't sure that he did, but it's like second and did a nice job. So Rob has a hit, a couple of nice plays at first. Reacclimating himself to this level quite nicely. Although they are going to review this. Paul Emmel, the crew chief, heads over there to talk to New York. The clock here in the stadium that the fans can see the 30 second clock and it went dark past 30 seconds but the umpires were still giving the Diamondbacks a little more time to decide. 
they decided to review this. I'm very surprised because the looks they're getting in their TV area are pretty much the same looks that we were getting, and we saw it pretty clearly that it was an out. And they've already confirmed. Let's go down to Alana. Guys, I can tell you that what was you noticed that was not lost on the players and the coaches in the dugout, they were very closely watching the clock and they're screaming out at the umpiring crew, hey, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, you're already past your time to say that you want to have the review, but it turns out to be in the Dodgers' favor anyway. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to have the timer, why not enforce it? Paul Goldschmidt takes ball one. So the two new mandates this year, the 30 seconds to decide and then the two minutes in New York to come up with an answer. But they are mandates, not strict rules. 2 0. Oh. McCarthy had the first three reach against him in the first inning, but he's since retired seven in a row. Is 2 0. -oh. Is a strike on Goldschmidt. Paul Goldschmidt out of Texas State met his wife there. She was a golfer at Texas State. They had their first baby last year, a boy named Jake. Three and one. Base of that Arizona franchise. There's been some talk around Phoenix that if Arizona was to struggle again this year, there'd be considerations of selling and Paul Goldschmidt would be one of the natural pieces that teams would die to have a chance at acquiring A.J. Pollock another. He's in the fourth year of an incredibly team friendly deal fourth year of a five year thirty two million dollar contract. McCarthy's three two just misses and Goldschmidt has walked for the second time tonight. That contract makes him even more valuable right. 22, Jake Lamb. Of course, the ability and people would love to have Goldie on their team, but boy, when you have a team friendly contract also, the team that traded for him would probably want to extend him also, and that would be part of the negotiation on the trade to be able to talk to Goldie and get an extension, because you're probably going to have to give up four or five players to get him. Jake Lamb, bats with the man at first and one gone. Here comes McCarthy and there's strike one with a two seam fastball. You wonder how in the world is Paul Goldschmidt on a five year thirty two million dollar deal. Well he signed that deal like some players choose to really early on. He hadn't even played in two hundred games in the majors when he signed the long term contract. Some guys choose security over flexibility. Close attention to Goldschmidt, who is a big first baseman, but was top 10 in the majors in steals last year. There was only one other first baseman that ranked in the top 90. And Goldschmidt was ninth. The other first baseman that had a handful of steals, Will Myers, down in San Diego. Lamb shanks it foul, and it's 0 2. Goldschmidt put in a lot of extra work. They Talk about his work ethic legendary around Phoenix but put in a bunch of extra work with Arizona's old base running coach perfected his leads perfected his reads on pitchers incorporated studying the pickoff moves and the deliveries into his scouting. Got a decent lead on 0 2 and Lamb takes ball one. See that so often with the great players. They're always refining, always finding those things, those room, those opportunities to grow their game. Yeah. 
If you know that somebody doesn't pitch out very often, the Dodgers don't. It's really one of the lost arts in the big leagues. More, more about guys aren't stealing very much, but high fastball, and Brandon McCarthy likes to throw the breaking ball. If you were thinking about stealing, it's a good pitch to go on. And McCarthy gets Lamb. So Brandon McCarthy with five punch outs through three and two thirds and two gone in the fourth. And with the up cutter, that would have been a good pitch to throw a base runner out on. Absolutely perfect. Dodgers have held Lamb to a one of eight in this series. He came in having reached in eight of his last nine plate appearances. With two gone, it's Yasmani Tomas, the strikeout victim himself, his first time up. The cutter catches the corner. So you're talking about Goldschmidt's deal. Five years, 35 million. To put into perspective what kind of uh, team-friendly deal that is, Yasmani Tomas, six years, 68 million. One very good value the other one they're hoping is not sunk cost there have been some encouraging signs from Tomas he had an OPS in the second half last year that it was 170 points higher than in the first half after really wearing down in his first major league season two years ago this is one that was up and it's 0-2 one of the things he did last year was he changed his home game routine to more closely mirror what he did on the road. And now puts his focus on doing activities to keep his energy and his alertness up at home with all the downtime since the home team takes batting practice first. And you have those two hours between BP and the start of the game. That's very interesting. It's really a good pickup from the coaching staff or himself. You know my warm up routine as a starting pitcher was different home in a way and you try to mimic the one I like the one at home where you can come in and you're judging the time all yourself with game time where when you're on the road you have to see how your offense does before you take them out. Sometimes you're trying to time it up. Get your towel off your water and time it up with the offense and how the innings going and other times they're getting you three or four runs you're sitting there for a while you're glad but you're a little anxious about am I going to be loose and ready to go the best first inning on the road is when you have to go back to the bullpen because your team's almost like almost batting around <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it's been 20 minutes I think we'll go down and throw a few but we're got we're up seven nothing can't be a bad feeling to take the mound for the first time with that kind of lead nope the only thing you get the problem is on those innings is your spot in the order is coming up. All right. American League, it's great. American League, you actually can stay in the bullpen and time it up with how the offense is doing because you're not going to hit. In the National League, you've got to actually try and time it up. And then if you do get one of those long innings, you just can't hop out in front of the dugout and start playing catch <laughs> or something because your spot in the order might be coming up in two, three spots. So you can't run to the bullpen either and then have to run into the batter's box from the bullpen to hit. Tomas takes this one, ball one. The Yasmani Grandal and a few of us with Bob Guerin sit around and laugh about how do you practice catching foul tips. That last pitch right there is pretty much you, you can't practice that one either. You put the glove down to guard the five hole and if it ends up sticking in your glove you you can't practice that. Turner Ward joked around. I'll tell you how you practice catching foul tips. You put somebody like me in there and say, have at it. Go ahead and take your hacks. Give you plenty of foul tips. <laughs> McCarthy's getting plenty of strikeouts. He's got six through four and four shutout innings in a one nothing game.
without high school senior athlete. Joe's child is too young, mine are too old, and nominate them for a chance to be named a Spectrum Sports Championship Drive Scholar Athlete and receive a $25,000 college scholarship. That's a lot of money. Uh huh. Go to SpectrumChamp.com now for more information. Keke Hernandez fouls off the first Robbie Ray pitch. Show on one. 25,000. 2,500. Oh, that's, see, I misread it on purpose. I was trying to give a little enthusiasm. I'd still take $2,500 scholarship. Maybe I should pitch in the rest. Go right ahead. <laughs> Here's a towering drive down the left field line. If it stays fair, it is gone. Pique Hernandez with his first home run of the season. Now time for our Arco top tier play of the game brought to you by Arco, of course, and really brought to you also by Kike Hernandez. Stay fair, stay fair, stay fair. It does. And strike one on Rob Seganin. So Hernandez making the start today with the left-handed pitcher on the mound. And caution a home run. Sagadin swings over the top. 0 oh 2. See what happens when you up a scholarship from 2,500 to 25,000. PK goes deep. Ball one. Some fog rolling into Dodger Stadium right now. Some home runs are hit so hard, high that they bring rain. <laughs> Some brings fog. <laughs> KK brought fog. You're right about that being high. I'm gonna check the launch angle on it. Second and singled his first time, scored the game's first run, and a sacrifice fly from Forsyth. Two and two. Thirty seven degrees the launch angle up for Hernandez. Sweet spot is between twenty five and thirty to hit home runs. A two two. Second and chases strike three. So that place you're looking does it have exit velocity also one oh seven. I knew it had to be crushed right if the launch angle is too high or not in the sweet spot. Says it traveled 390 feet. So gone by a good amount. Says 360 in front of the bullpen. Here's Van Slyke with the bases empty and one gone, and he hits one up into the fog. Strike one. Fog almost looks like the smoke monster from Lost. Up in front of the lights right now. You know the lost guy roll. Uh, you lost me. Okay, one and one. Good show. If it's that good, maybe I'll be found. Maybe I'll I'll watch it. Two and one. It's a great show to binge watch. So it's a Netflix thing or something. No, Lost. Yeah. You never heard of Lost? No. How about this, folks? Tweet Oral about that. What do you mean? Don't get my Twitter account going. I got to scroll <laughs> through all those and see who says something bad, and I got to then respond to him and calm him down. <laughs> Putting me to work. Two and two. I'm just surprised you haven't heard of it. It's not been on in a while, but it was, a, it was on for, what, six, seven seasons? I watch like sports. That. I watch news, and my wife likes the game show network. Then slight down swinging, and Reyes responded to the home run with a pair of Ks. Number 38, Brandon McCarthy. Now McCarthy comes up, sacrificed his first time, and wound up reaching. And the throw to first went off of the glove of a covering Descalso. Opened the door for the Dodgers to get their first run. Strike one. 
Four shutout innings for McCarthy. Had six shutout innings his last time out against the Cubs in Chicago. He swings away, lifts a fly ball to right. Peralta was playing in into foul ground, not going to get there. You know, a lot of times I'll talk about the length of a game and that in some ways we play extra inning games all the time compared to when the stadiums were configured the old ways. Because the ball now in the first six to eight rows used to be an out. Now it's a foul ball. And so you have to record those in the olden days as outs and now they're just strikes. And even that ball that didn't make it into the stands, you got to pull up because the stands are right there. Ray winds up getting three consecutive strikeouts after the Hernandez home run way up into the sky for Hernandez first home run of the season and the Dodgers have a two nothing lead through four. organization teamed up with make a wish to make a wish come true for a young 17 year old here locally in California Michael Gonzalez was able to be a Dodger for the day in 2015 Michael was diagnosed with a very rare type of cancerous tumor he was in remission for a year but recently has experienced a relapse and he's a huge baseball fan he's a former player at his high school and he really just wanted to be a Dodger so he signed a contract earlier today with Andrew Friedman present in the interview room he was down in the clubhouse he got his own uniform a locker his very own nameplate, Scott Van Slyke, Clayton Kershaw, really the entire team making him feel welcome. He was able to throw out the ceremonial first pitch and say it's time for Dodger baseball. We wish him well in his health and hopefully he continues to get better, guys. Awesome stuff, Alana. And Kershaw right by his side all afternoon. I'm seeing them down there take batting practice together during the pitcher BP. Here comes Brandon McCarthy starting the fifth and missing with ball one. The Dame with his Kelso. I walked out on the field today. I saw him in the cage. I, I go, who's the new Gonzalez? <laughs> <laughs> right. One and one. McCarthy has done a great job of getting ahead of hitters in this game. Eight of the first 14 batters that he's faced. He's got not just a head, but to an 0 2 count. It's helped him get six K's. Only two hits allowed, both singles in the first inning. Off of the hands of Descalso, and a jam shot gets the first out. Number 16, Chris Owings. Here's Chris Owings. You're seeing version 2.0, Brandon McCarthy, and it's been around a while now. But the guy you see now is different than the one that broke into the majors 
more than a decade ago with the White Sox. That's ball one on Owings. Developed the interest in advanced stats and some Sabre metrics. 2009 2010 around the time when he decided to model himself after Roy Halladay it slips and it's 2 0 on Owings. But looking at some of those advanced stats he saw the value in attacking the zone and inducing weak contact inducing ground balls as opposed to nibbling and trying to strike everybody out. It's 2 0. Catches the corner and it's 2 and 1. So he went from being a four seam slider guy to a sinker cutter guy. Battled injuries at first but took off in Oakland when he finally got healthy with that new approach. Two and two. Owings takes ball three. Brandon McCarthy really is a pleasant surprise. What's going on? I mean, you talk about Brandon McCarthy 2.0, but at the end of last year, he had a virus in his computer. I mean, that we didn't know if that was going to go away. I mean, he got the yips, and other people call it the thing. And I'll tell you what, uh, his goal coming into spring training was to erase that memory and. To prove to himself that he could throw strikes and competitively they nursed him along on the backfields and side works and really eased him into big league competition. And then to have the start that he's having right now recording two very good starts and now this one right here is exceptional. I mean it really is a pleasant surprise his contribution this early in the season and, and looking forward to the rest of the year at a time when the Dodgers could use a starting pitcher to step up there's a payoff and he walks Owings his third free pass issued planning weekends with friends and family just became easier and more fun you can attend five to five Dodger games either Saturday Friday Saturday Sunday starting at twenty dollars a game more information and tickets go to Dodgers.com slash mini plans. One out base runner for Jeff Mathis. That's a strike. So I guess you could almost say this is. Brandon McCarthy 3.0. You've got the first guy, the fastball slider guy. Then you have Brandon McCarthy 2.0, which is the one who found an advanced stats interest, became the cutter two seam guy, but the version of that guy battling injuries like he did for so long. There's a fly ball foul, and he's once again had ahead 0 and 2. But now you have the guy who has all those advanced stat philosophies of pounding the zone inducing weak contact that is now two years removed from Tommy John and as healthy as he's been ever since inventing himself the way he has as a fastball two seam fastball sinker guy. Mathis down swinging 93 the seventh punch out for Brandon McCarthy. Whatever version we're on, we really like this version. Well, he's throwing away. the ball really well through every quadrant with movement, high velocity. Very cerebral guy, but he's finding a way to process it all and still stay an athlete and repeat his delivery. And very, very aggressive. Now just needs to retire the pitcher to finish the fifth inning but Ray hits his third base hit of the season. Owens goes first to third. And they're at the corners with two gone for the top of the order. Finds a hole it's about a five hopper. 
pretty good. None of the hops very big. But just a routine ground ball should not damage your confidence on the mound. You get another one of those. Usually they're at somebody. Robbie Ray making an early run at a silver slugger three for six. So A.J. Pollock. The runners at the corners in two gone. He's one for two today. Singled to begin the game and was thrown out trying to steal second. McCarthy pitches and has strike one. As he has so often today. Local product. Born in Glendale, grew up in Pasadena. Or his family moved to Colorado while he was a teenager. Grew up a Dodger fan. That's lined to center. Here comes Hernandez, but it drops in front of him. And A.J. Pollock has brought home Chris Owings for Arizona's first run. Right fielder, David Peralta. He stays on it, Pollock does. It's off the end of the bat. The cutter, it's up. Didn't cut that much. Gave him a chance to sneak it out there to the outfield. So back to back two out singles against McCarthy has Arizona on the board. And it's David Peralta. Peralta turns on one that bounces into center a base hit. Here comes Robbie Ray and the throw is not in time. Arizona ties it with three consecutive two out singles against Brandon McCarthy. He jams Peralta here and the ball is not hit very hard at all and this guy still had a chance to throw him out because Robbie Ray being a pitcher not run real well. As Monty gets ripped by the backswing on the hit but you can see Kike still has a chance with a ball that's weakly hit the center with a good strong throw. There's not enough velocity on the hit. And here comes Rick Cunningham for his first visit as Grant Dayton gets loose. Dodger bullpen has worked hard this year. One of the best bullpens in baseball. 45 innings of work. They've only given up 27 hits. That bullpen is yet to give up a home run. And they've walked the fewest guys for a bullpen in baseball. But overused the last couple of days because of short starts. 11 innings in the last two games. Allowing only one run during that stretch. So now it's Paul Goldschmidt trying to give Arizona the lead. Pollock at third. Peralta at first. Both with RBI singles. Here comes McCarthy and Goldschmidt can't lay off. Strike one. McCarthy was rolling along and then gave up three hits in the span of four pitches. And in the blink of an eye, this game is tied. Oh one. one down and away one ball and one strike first runs that McCarthy is allowed since his first start a couple of weeks ago here against San Diego shut the Cubs out over six innings last week Pollock at third and Peralta at first here comes a one one on the edge one and two. The kind of called strike that can save an inning. Those borderline pitches that you catch. Nice job by Yasmani keeping it on the plate, even if it wasn't. I don't think you'll see any trickeration on the bases with Paul Goldschmidt up there. I think they'll just let him hit. 
That's Monty coming out for the first and third signs. One, two. And he gets him swinging with a fastball. But Arizona jumps on McCarthy to tie the game halfway home in L.A. Net LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Get incredible deals on a spacious new Sienna, Toyota's leading the way sales event. Before Vin Scully, Red Barber was the voice of the Dodgers, a Hall of Famer himself. And on this date in 1934, when he was 26, so well before that picture there, but he called his first major league game. On this date, Logan Forsyth takes strike one from Robbie Ray. Not just his first major league game as a broadcaster, but his first major league game, period. He had never been. And he called that first one for the Reds. Other than two. Five years in Cincinnati, then went on to Brooklyn in 1939. Eventually on to the Yankees. And hired Vin Scully. Forsyth quickly retired by Ray. On three pitches for the first out here in the bottom of the fifth. Shortstop, Corey Seager. Brings up Corey Seager in a 2-2 game. You ever heard the story of how Red Barber found Vin Scully, gave Vin Scully his first job as the Dodger announcer? So Vin was fresh out of college, 22 years old at this point, and through a mutual connection, met Red Barber. Seager grounds it foul, and it's 0-1. Nothing came of that first meeting, but a couple of months later, one of Red's jobs was he ran CBS Radio Sports, was in charge of their college football coverage, and had an opening, needed an announcer for a game. A check swing, but he offered, and it's 0-2. And so he thought of that young red-headed kid that he had run into, and Vin went up to Fenway Park to call the Maryland-Boston U football game at Fenway. Here's Ray's 0-2. Seeger fouls it off. It's freezing cold that day, but Vin's thinking, all right, you know, I've made it. This is big-time national CBS radio, so it's cold, but I'm sure I'm going to be in a nice booth with a window closed, and I don't need a hat. I don't need a coat. I don't need gloves. I'm going to be comfy. Here's another 0-2, and Seeger takes strike three over the inside. So he gets to the park. And he checks, you know, where's my booth at? Turner. Rubbing his hands together, it's going to be great, right? Well, they show him the roof of the press box. There's a card table sitting there with a microphone and 50 yards of microphone cable. So Vin walks up and down the press box roof and calls this college football game in the freezing cold without a coat, without gloves, without a hat. 
But Vin being the professional that he is and was even at that point, never complained about it. Nobody ever knew that he was up in the cold. Here's Turner, down 0-1, and a 2-2 game in the fifth. So the next week, Boston U calls Red Barber and CBS Radio to apologize for the conditions that they put his announcer in, and Red says, wait a minute, what? Scully called that game out in the cold? Up and in on Turner, and it's 1-1. One and one. And so Barber went from thinking, yeah, this kid was pretty good for his first game to being extra impressed. Called him back the next week, gave him another college football game. Two on one. And then two months later, Ernie Harwell, another Hall of Fame broadcaster, left the Dodgers, opening up his spot for the number three radio announcer behind Barber and Connie Desmond. And Vin got the call. Wow. A 2 1. Curve outside, 3 and 1. I heard another version of that story at some time here, you know, but never that much detail. Turner fights it off, and it's 3 and 2. I knew he did the game from the roof. I didn't, I didn't have a coach. Yeah. The no thing gloves. was, he was headed to a dance. Okay. And so he didn't want to have all this extra baggage, right? This big coat and hat and gloves. Right. Wanted to be styling, sleek. Just wear that simple outfit. Paid the price that day, but it was all worth it. Ray able to strike out the side here in the fifth inning. Moving along as we go to the sixth in a 2 2 game. Spa slow mo cam, and it is a Brandon McCarthy. We were throwing the ball outstanding with repeatable mechanics, great movement. We just happened to clump together some weak hits there that tied this game at two, but he was deserving of a little better fate. Eight strikeouts he had, and now Grant Dayton takes over for him. And one of the many guys that has been perfect as far as your run average goes down in that Dodger bullpen. Best in the National League. By earned run average the Dodger pen but overworked the last couple of days 11 innings. With back to back short starts from Maeda and Hill. Middle third of the Diamondbacks order Grant Dayton against Jake Lamb to open the six. Dayton starts him with a fastball that he drags foul. Including this game over the last three games. Dodger bullpen working on 11 plus innings. Now the starters 
have only gone 12 so they're going to go right by him as far as total workload for the three games here against the Diamondbacks not including game one where Clayton Kershaw won seven to one and almost went nine. One and one a little bit reminiscent of last year for several stretches where nobody was going deep especially when Kershaw was down. The bullpen was so huge. And when Clayton was down the Dodgers were down to the Giants and they caught him. Two and one. Trail by as many as eight games actually the day that Kershaw made his last start before going on the DL that was on June 26. But without him they charge back. With quite a bit of help from San Francisco who was one of the worst teams in baseball after the break. Three and one. Talk about Jekyll and Hyde for the My Giants goodness. last year. They were one of the best in the first half. One of the worst in the second half. And a lot of that second half they got healthy. A lot of their starters came back and they did worse. And when they had their reserves in there. Dayton's 3 1. Jake Lamb takes ball four. Leadoff walk here in the sixth. San Francisco in the first half last year, just to put numbers to your point, 57 and 33, best in the majors. In the second half, 30 and 42, fourth worst in the majors. Yasmani Tomas with the leadoff man on in a tie game here in the six. So the Dodgers with the giant slide they went from down eight in late June to first place by August 9th. Without Clayton right. Tomas takes strike one. The day that Clayton got hurt and went on the DL was one of the lowest days in a long long time in this organization. Three division titles, Clayton's all of his accolades and awards, and all of a sudden he's hurt and you're down eight for the Giants. They turned that whole thing around. And that's a tip of the cap to Dave Roberts, of course, who won manager of the year, but really also the front office, Andrew Friedman and Farhan Zaidi, anticipating that disaster could possibly hit the organization and, and having the wherewithal to have the depth to be able to weather that storm and not only weather it but because of the giant skid you know, triumph. Oh and two. Dodgers got swept in the final weekend by the Giants and still won the division by four games. Steady hand of Dave Roberts. And the fantastic planning and execution by the front office. Dayton trying to bounce back from the leadoff walk against Tomas. Here's his 0 2. It's up. Dayton was part of that bullpen last year. In fact, right in the middle of that stretch, he made his major league debut. July 22nd in St. Louis. Pitched the 11th and the 12th inning. Before things got weird and it went 16. You know what I really like about last year? Is when Andrew came over and Farhan came over and there was a new controversy in Los Angeles baseball of what are these guys going to do and how are they going to put the organization together and what's their strategy? And it was very much sabermetric. You know, based as far as the opinion. And last year proved that these guys, that's not the only thing they do. It's a piece of the game. They are so into people and character and training. Quig makes a running catch and goes back to first, not in time. But great range to come in and pull it in for out number one. And I'm glad that the narrative in town. That Farhan and Andrew are completely embedded in the Los Angeles baseball culture now as far as what the fans think of them and they know that they can put a championship together. And that's that's refreshing coming into this year because that has been kind of a haze at times. I think a lot of what happened last year was 
affirmation yeah. for what they were doing and what they were building. If you can survive and, and win it, win the West and get two games away from the World Series with everything that happened. Descalso turns this one around to right. Yasiel Puig makes it look like it's either flying out of here or he's a statue. <laughs> Ends up making the catch. Puig being Puig. The last one he had great range. This one he's like, can I figure out exactly where it's going to be and I don't have to move? Oh, I got to adjust by three steps. He takes more steps watching a home run than he did catching that fly ball. You're right about that. <laughs> There was a split second there where I thought my gosh should I just misread this ball horribly and it's <laughs> like 20 rows deep with the way he's reacting. With the man at first and two gone Grant Dayton to Chris Owens. Ball one. Can you imagine if Yasiel was one of the uh, traffic helpers out in Dodger Stadium parking lot after a game. Uh, you wouldn't have any idea what to stop or go. Or <laughs> <laughs> the fans coming across the walkways. I mean, that's a rough job, but if you got a guy who's trying to fake you out, too, <laughs> you've got some accidents. Yeah, I'm still learning, learning uh, my way out of here. Which lane to take? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I like the inside lane on our parking lot. One and one. And then I like to get more to the middle as you get closer to okay. center field. And then, then you got to get left yep. you to get over to left field where our exit is. Pop on the 110 and yep. so much fun to drive that truck that road. It is without traffic. <laughs> but rarely is there <laughs> bad traffic between here and where we're heading. Oldest freeway. Mm -hmm. In the whole USA? No. It's got to be at least coast. in California. OK, California, because it's got to be an East Coast freeway. I would think that would be the oldest. Like somewhere around Philadelphia, like the Schuylkill Expressway, I'm thinking. I don't know. That might be the most dangerous. Dayton to Owens with a 1-1, one -one, and he's behind a fastball. Dayton, after walking the leadoff man, has a chance to make this a quiet inning. First freeway in the western United States. Okay. Open in 1940. A one-two. A little bit low. Two balls, two strikes. Got to be close to the windiest freeway. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> western United States. Randall wants it up. Dayton checks on first. The reason it's so windy, it was built before the concept of having freeways actually going through stuff. This one wound around the land. A 2-2 two -two and Owens flexes it back. We'll do it again. Dodgers got one in the first and one in the fourth. The D-backs getting two in the fifth. And here we are locked at two in the sixth inning. Dayton's 2-2 two -two and Owings follows it back again. A couple guys from the southeast. Dayton played his college ball at Auburn. Chris Owings 
High schooler in South Carolina. Emmett first with two gone. He walked to start the inning. Dayton getting a pair of flyouts to right. Left hander with another 2 2 pitch. Only smashes it down the right field line. Puig over to give it a look. And we will do it again. Owens trying to stay healthy. An injury riddled career for him. Bad shoulder injury a few years back, and it took him close to two years before he felt fully healthy again. Couldn't put in a full offseason of work before that first year back. Made mechanical adjustments to compensate for the pain that he was feeling, and it threw everything off. A 2 2. Finally puts this one in play. And Rob Sagadin in foul ground has it. And the inning is over. A leadoff walk, but no damage done. And they're enjoying this one as we go to the bottom of the six. More modern freeways. Those are no fun to drive. <laughs> Time for unlimited baseball break brought to you by T Mobile as we welcome you back to Los Angeles. An update around baseball. Trey Mancini has tied a major league record by hitting seven homers in his first 12 games. The Yankees, after a slow start, have gotten hot at home and won seven in a row at home to open the year. Some surprising fast starts in this division we've talked about Colorado and Arizona and some surprising slow starts Toronto the worst record in baseball at two and ten and the defending American League champ Cleveland is six and seven ball one on Puig starting the sixth against Robbie Ray who is fan ten. And back on your screen is Yasiel Puig. He is everywhere. Swing and a line drive to left. And it falls to Tomas. Just got it off the end of the bat. I think the ball he hit the center in his first at bat hit it hard, but didn't get all of it either. Dodgers getting single runs against Ray in the second and in the fourth. Run in the second came on a foresight sack fly. The run in the fourth came on a Kike Hernandez solo homer. Grandall is 0 for 2. Ray delivers. Ball one. So Trey Mancini, we, we gave the note about him being rookie tying the record for most home runs in the first 12 games of his career. Seven. Tied a record that was tied last year by Trevor Story. 2-0. You remember the story about the guy that 
Story, head tied, Dino Ristelli. Yes. We talked about him a little bit last year. Mm -hmm. Hard hit to third. Great play by Jake Lamb. And now a long throw, but Goldschmidt can't corral him. Grandal's aboard with one out. So Dino Ristelli played for the Pirates in the late 40s. He hit seven homers in his first 12 games. But he only had five home runs the rest of his career. So seven homers in his first 12 games and five more. And they say there were a couple things that derailed Ristelli's career. The first thing was he couldn't wear contacts and his glasses always fogged up. So there was an issue with him seeing pitches because of the foggy glasses. As he played more humid climates. Hernandez drives the ball in the air to right. Peralta cruises under it for out number two. Because of the foggy glasses issue, Rostelli had a bandana that he carried in his back pocket, this bright red bandana. And pitchers Second. used to get upset. He would step out all the time and take the bandana to the glasses, and it's like, all right, let's move along now. Get in the box. One really hard thrower got upset and came inside and it corresponded with a pitch where Ristelli was trying to step out to call time to wipe his glasses with his red bandana and he got hit in the back of the neck by the pitch oh. and was fine. Yeah. He was in there the next day but never the same after he got rattled like that. Bob Sagadin with a check swing tapper back to the mound and Ray will throw him out. The other thing they say derailed Dino Rostelli's career, a tooth extraction gone wrong. He lost 20 pounds and lost his pop. Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Kike Hernandez slides over to left field as Jock Peterson comes in at center. And Scott Van Slyke goes from left to first. That's with Chris Hatcher coming into the game to pitch and in four games so far he's been pretty sharp a 129 earned run average. Got off to a bumpy start at the game this season but has really started to lock in. And like most guys that are on a roll it's attack get ahead. Use the secondary stuff or the high fastball to put him away and Chris has been using that plan to perfection lately. Get strike one on Jeff Mathis. Patrick gave up a run in his debut on opening day, but three consecutive scoreless outings since. And 
this is without a doubt the highest leverage situation that he's pitched in. Is 0 1. Fastball is lifted in the air to left. Hernandez is there, and that's the first out. Chris is a big part and a piece of this Dodger bullpen that has been outstanding here early in the season. They keep that up, that will really affect the outcome of this season because the Cincinnati Reds were the only team last year that got less innings out of their starters than the Dodgers. So the bullpen is very, very important. How about the Reds' bullpen overall this year being one of the best in baseball and the Reds being one of the best teams so far? Like eight and five? Yeah, first in the Central. A lot of people peg them as one of the two or three worst teams in baseball coming into the year. And they very well may be by the end, but it's been a good start. So Robbie Ray's day is finished as Jeremy Hazelbaker comes up to bat. Six for 12 in limited action so far. Laid on a fastball, strike one. Debut with the Cardinals last year after eight major or eight minor league seasons. Included a couple years in the Dodgers system. They released him in 2015. That's a strike. It's 0 2. Hazel Baker, for the first time in his life, started considering life after baseball when the Dodgers cut him loose. Thought about going back to business school. Cardinals were the only team that called. And later the next year, he made his big league debut for him. Ball one. on one two gets him swinging two up and two down in the seventh and start your great Dodger moments coin collection Wednesday when the Dodgers finish off this homestand against the Rockies first coin commemorates Tommy Lasorda's induction into the National Baseball Hall of Fame courtesy of 76 go to Dodgers.com slash promotions I hear there may be a coin honoring something you did in your career I bet you can get your hands on one. Maybe 59 of them. Oh, maybe 59 of them. That's a hint. <laughs> A.J. Pollock. Strike one. I'm going to get you one. Are you really? Yeah. That's nice of you. I'm going to step out. I thought Boyd was going to get me one. Boyd's getting one before you. <laughs> okay. I'm getting your daughter Charlotte one. That's nice of you. Those coins are pretty special. I yeah. got to see them already. They are good looking. Pollock swing and a miss. 0 and 2. We talked about the Dodgers having a pitcher and Brandon McCarthy exceeding expectations and start to say the same about Chris Hatcher early on this year. Quig moves over and just runs out of room. Maybe not as much exceeding expectations as it is meeting finally expectations with the stuff that Chris Hatcher has. You know, ask anybody around the Dodgers, elite stuff when he's right. There are some staffs in the big leagues that don't have a lot of potential this not a lot of great arms or maybe not a lot of great stuff and people are searching for talent that is never part of the equation here with the Dodgers the talent and the arms are off the chart it's just reaching that potential and that consistency and that's only in the pieces that are not producing never a lack of talent 
Never a lack of arm strength or execution as far as the types of pitches they can throw with the movement. And it's really just about that consistency so they reach their potential. And that's all the way through the whole organization. That's just not the big league staff. I mean, so many different arms are needed up here, but all the way down to rookie ball and A ball, it's ridiculous, the talent. Not real exciting to talk about all the guys that are in the minor leagues that have tremendous talent and how they've built that organization down there too, but it is exciting when they get here and, and they contribute. And we saw a lot of that last year. There's a lot of big league time in young men's bodies down there in the minors because of last year's injuries. That was a strike. I think they missed that one, Chris. Yep. Can't place it any better than that. Mm -hmm. Trying to work a one, two, three, seven. It's full on Pollock. There's a pair of singles today. Diamondbacks tied it in the fifth inning on three consecutive two out hits in the span of four pitches against Brandon McCarthy. He was otherwise fantastic. Battle of the bullpens now. On paper that favors the Dodgers one of the best pens in the National League so far the Diamondbacks one of the worst. That's ready for a payoff and Pollock grounds it in front of the plate he can really run and Grandall's throw not in time. Perfectly placed swinging bunt. A strike three call that was missed. A pretty good 3-2 slider right here. Gets no contact at all out of it. But it is just enough contact to roll it out there to beat it out. And it gets David Peralta to the play for Arizona with two gone here in the seventh. Pollock and Peralta came into the game 0 for 17 combined in this series, but tonight 5 for 7. Hatcher's first one, a high strike. Peralta from Venezuela. I grew up idolizing Johan Santana. Started his pro career as a pitcher with the Cardinals. A couple of shoulder surgeries. They released him. Went back to his roots as an outfielder. A few years in indie ball and then signed down with Arizona. Made the big league roster a year later. Very good time to take control of the running game. Your Chris Hatcher, Osmani Grandal, Scott Van Slyke over there at first. Pollock can run, tie, two outs, seventh inning. Risk reward favors Arizona as far as letting him go. One and one. Grandal has thrown out both. Potential base stealers tonight. He's thrown out five of the nine so far this year. That included Pollock in the first inning. And you look over there and you see the red beard in the shot at first base. That's not a mistake. Justin Turner moving from third all the way over there to play what was his original position, second base. Leave Corey Seager at home at short and Logan Forsyth up the middle playing what would be a double play depth approximately for a second baseman. So the only guy that feels like he's out of position is Justin Turner. But that's very natural place for him to read the ball off the bat.
see more and more teams doing that. Have three guys in their normal place and one guy moved to a place that seems like it's out of position, but a lot of times that guy is used to it. Hatcher's 2 1. Foul back and it's 2 and 2. Five innings from McCarthy, then Dayton pitched the sixth. Hatcher trying to work a scoreless seven. Pollock off to his lead. He's not running. Peralta with a base hit buzzing by Hatcher into center. So back to back two out singles for Arizona and trying to do the same thing they did in the fifth and put something together with two out. Dodger bullpen with Grant Dayton put up a zero. Chris Hatcher trying to put up a zero here, but the one thing Arizona is doing is making these guys work. Hatcher's got 19 pitches to try and get through this inning so far, and Grant Dayton took 18. It's one thing you'd love to do at the beginning of a series because you get the benefit of it, a tired possible bullpen the rest of the series, but the only people are going to benefit from these, this work is Colorado coming in here tomorrow. Unjin Ryu, by the way, starts for the Dodgers tomorrow against Kyle Freeland of the Rockies. That's a 7 10 game in the opener against Colorado. Same thing Wednesday night. Tyler Anderson for the Rockies, Clayton Kershaw for the Dodgers. Two on and two out in a tie game in the seventh, and Paul Goldschmidt swings away, hits a towering fly ball to left that Kike Hernandez has all night to cruise under. Inning over. It is stretch time at Dodger Stadium. Locked it two. Seventy six calendar two at the Rockies after this wraparound series with Arizona then an off day to travel to Arizona and three more with the Diamondbacks so that means seven games in a nine game stretch come against Arizona Joe Davis or her Scheiser Alana Rizzo and now J.J. Hoover at Dodger Stadium and a 2 2 game in the bottom of the seventh and Dave Roberts countering by sending Adrian Gonzalez up there. And Mathis was crossed up on that first pitch, still able to squeeze strike one. Adrian still looking for his first long ball of the year. It's 
Slider is low, and it's one and one. One and two. Over the former Red. In his first year with Arizona. Had an ERA above 13 a year ago. Gonzalez lays off and it's two and two. He's part of that historically bad Reds bullpen. And that wasn't just like one bad outing skewed his ERA. He pitched 18 times. But gave up 29 runs in his 18 and two thirds. On 2-2, two -two, Gonzalez rips one to right and starts the inning with a pinch hit single. It's the beginning of the 2016 season. Hoover has the worst miss rate of any pitcher. Only 6.6.5% of the time does a left-handed hitter miss off of him. And the line drive percentage of his off him is off the charts. Lefties see him very, very well. So that's what he's going to get here, Jock Peterson. First at bat of the night for him. Came in defensively as part of a double switch two innings ago. 2-2 two, two in the seventh. Ball one. Quite an equation if the Dodgers can at least keep games close against left handed starters because of what Dave Roberts can then bring off his bench. Pulls the trigger on Gonzalez. Now you see Peterson. Still has tolls available, still has Utley available. Hoover's 1 0. Strike. Mathis really wants him to throw a given pitch. And it's in there for a strike. Hoover shook it like three or four times in Mathis, the 13 year veteran, basically had body language that said, I don't care what you want, this is what you're throwing. And when you haven't had much success on the mound, you should really follow the veteran catcher. Got him 95 with a fastball to strike out Peterson for the first out of the seventh. A little slide 11. step delivery up the running game and surprised the hitter and get kind of a flinch swing out of Jock. Didn't really pick that ball up very well. So am I right in seeing that that's not the case? He's not telling him you're throwing this. They're using a different kind of signs right now. Well, I didn't see the shaking of the head on that one, but they might be using some pumps because right. he might have trouble seeing fingers. Yep. So they're just doing it on movement. That would be so maybe that'd be a fastball. fastball, I'm thinking. Ball one on Forsyth, and it was. And so we went three flashes of four fingers, but you're just really looking at, a, at the hand moving. And that probably would be a slider. Let's see how many times he just flashes the hand. And just count those. Another fastball. One and one. That'd be easier to pick up and steal as a base runner. Well, yeah, and you can if you, you figure out they're on pumps, uh, you can do it as even a third base coach or the guy on first can do it and just look for the hand movement there in the wrist. That's slider, three pumps. And it is one and two. I use pumps with a man on second base, but I also started with the first number the catcher put down. So, and you, I turned the pumps over at five. 
So if this catcher put down a two, you start your counting at two, and then all you count is pumps from there hmm. to get to the number you want. Ball high, two and two. I also use the sequence of signs called ahead behind even. So ahead in the count, it was first sign. Behind in the count, it was second sign. And even in the count, it was third sign. Sosha tolerated all this from you? Well, he might have invented a few of them, too. You never <laughs> know. Catchers are pretty smart. Four side down swing, and Hoover looks pretty good. Two out. And then you'll get taps, so the catcher will tap Shortstop, his shin five, guards, Corey tap his chest protector, Seager. or tap his mask, and that'll be the signal for what signal you're doing. Usually it's one, two, three, or from the mask down, or one, two, three from the shin guards up. And then you give the sign. A zillion ways to do it, but there's probably about six or seven around the big leagues that are pretty common. Slider low and in he wants behind Corey, under Corey Swing. And right. gets it there. It's like playing a video game right there when you get the sign here and you watch the catcher flash the glove and then he actually executes it. Okay. Fastball up, put the cursor where you want it. Pretty close. Hoover can do this throughout the year. His resume is going to change. <laughs> yeah, he'd be looking at that 13 ERA last year, wondering what. Yeah. The one one, right down the middle, and Seager takes it one and two. Gonzalez started the inning with a single. He's still anchored to first. But two gone, and Seeger down in the count one and two. Here comes Hoover. It bounces two and two. Corey has struck out all three times so far tonight. 0 for 4 last night. After beginning the series on a tear, and 4 for 6 over the first two games. Go ahead, run on here in the seventh. And Seeger strikes out swinging. Fourth time tonight that he's struck out. And Hoover winds up going 1, 2, 3 with 3 Ks after the Gonzalez single. Dodgers on Thursday get an inside look at the team's first statue on Jackie Robinson Day plus go behind the scenes of the Dodgers cooking competition.
all presented by Hankook Tires Thursday at 7 on Sportsnet LA. Gonzalez stays in the game and plays first. And Chris Hatcher's out there for a second inning of relief work. Middle third of the order, Jake Lamb. Lamb swings at the first pitch and lifts a fly ball to deep right. Puig's at the wall. It's gone. And Arizona's taken its first lead. On the first pitch of the eighth, Lamb homers against Hatcher. Kick Lamb's third home run of the year. Does a nice job getting on top of this. It is a high strike near the middle of the plate, but it is also one that a lefty you can see them over swing and pop up. Long, high, arcing projector to that one. Now Tomas, strike one. So the Diamondbacks have gone from down two nothing to up three two here in the eighth. Another than two. Hit well to center. Peterson drifts back and he just got under it. One out. We talked about Chris pitching in as high a leverage situation as he has yet this season. Threw it in an article today on 538.com, which is all advanced stats and analytics. Nate Silver, who's one of the leading sports analytics minds out there. And he proposed a new statistic for bullpens to basically get rid of saves and use this new stat that he came up with. Ball one. His, his argument is that saves have kind of ruined how managers manage the bullpen. Mm -hmm. Just the presence of the stat. So he's going to do something with leverage? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he named it goose eggs. Partially out of uh, respect to Goose Gossage, it's one and one, who has talked at length about how he doesn't think closers should get as much credit as they do because he was a guy who would pitch several innings. And closers nowadays are called upon to get three outs typically. So Gossage is somebody who's talked about giving more credit to the guys that can go longer. So what a goose egg would be. And I don't have the exact criteria in front of me, but it's basically if the game is within two runs, seventh inning or later, and you pitch a scoreless inning, you get a goose egg. You pitch two scoreless innings, you get two goose eggs. So it's in a high leverage situation, and you get credit for every inning. Two and two on Descalso. Putting more of a premium on the closer game, too. Yep. Two runs instead of three. Mm -hmm. Like the save is the qualifier. In some ways I thought you were going to say getting an out without giving up a run would get you a goose egg. So like even an out maybe because you could get even more particular. That's right three two gone. The guy that gets let's say four outs and then gets removed because a righty's coming up and it's uh -huh. been Grant Dayton a left hander. You know, and Grant gets four outs doesn't have any action out there so he gets four goose eggs and then. You know, Sergio Romo comes in behind him, gets one out to get him through the inning. Now he gets a goose egg. You know, it's still like you're saying that high leverage situation. But how many outs did you record for your team in that situation? I'm not sure you, you would want it. You'd think about a whole inning. Chris Owings, ball on. Because the way bullpens, you'd want bullpens to function in the way they are now in a modern way is matchup you know it's not really about can my reliever go a full inning as much as is he getting out the guys that I want him to get out in the matchup situation one and one 
Okay, so here you go. You get one if you record three outs in those situations we talked about, or gotcha. you record at least one out, and the number of outs recorded plus the number of inherited runners totals mm. at least three. Okay, so he's got first and second, second and third, or bases loaded, and you get one out in that situation, you'll get a goose egg. Yes. Because it's a higher leverage situation than nobody on. Right. So with nobody on and no inherited runners, you need to pitch the whole three outs mm -hmm. and not set the table for yourself. Yeah. You know, right. say you're having a rough inning. Go get out of there with a zero. Two and two on Owings. Yeah. So if you came in with a with one runner on and got two outs, that's a goose egg. Right. The combination mm -hmm. of those numbers would get give you one. I kind of like that. I like that formula now because it adjusts to kind of what I said right. before we read it. Right. So the career leaderboards, career leaders for saves, Rivera, Hoffman, Lee Smith. Career leaderboards for goose eggs, Goose Gossage is number one. Down swing goes Owens. Raleigh Fingers is number two. Point Wilhelm is number three. And then you get Mariana Rivera fourth. Diamondbacks take the lead. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Your Southern California Nissan dealers, John Hartung, Jerry Hearson Jr., and Nomar Garcia of Harbor break this one down. I'll be in the clubhouse talking to Brandon McCarthy about his eight strikeout, two earned run day. We'll also hear from Dave Roberts as well, guys. All right, Alana. Hopefully talking about a Dodger comeback. They trail 3-2 to the bottom of the eighth. After Jake Lamb's tie-breaking homer. Justin Turner lines the ball towards left center, and that's down and off with Tomas ricocheting into center. Turner starts this inning by moving into scoring position. We'll see how it's ruled. Either way, the Dodgers in business here in the eighth. For me, this is a double. It's not an error on a single and an error because he's making an effort to keep this ball in front of him, just doesn't catch it. Justin Turner will have a double, and the Dodgers will have a man in scoring position with no outs. That's one of the drawbacks with Tomas and left, his defense. And it turns what probably would have been a single into a double. Puts the tying run in scoring position and brings Puig to the plate. Pop up and a short center. Out goes Descalso and on comes Peralta to bail him out for the first out. 
Catcher number nine, Yasmani Grandal. Grandal to the plate. It takes a little wind out of your sails, not having a productive out there from Yasiel. Yasmani's going to have to pick him up. Could have tied this game with a couple of productive outs, and now you're probably going to need a hit. Worth repeating from earlier in the game, the Dodgers in wins, hitting close to 300 with men in scoring position. And losses, they're two for 31 in these situations. So far tonight, 0 for 4. Over to Grandall after a toss to second. What the league has really started to pay attention to Justin Turner on the bases. Doesn't steal a lot of bags, but he steals important bags. Stole third with two outs this year already. It's a ball on Grandall. Decent arms across the outfield for Arizona. But the tying run at second and one gone here in the eighth. Diamondbacks try to win the final two games of this series to salvage a split. Dodgers won the opener 7 1. They won game two 8 4. The split for the Dodgers would not feel good. A pop up. And it's second to Scalso for the second out. Fielder, number 14. Numbers we're talking about. The opportunities mounting and still nobody's come through in a situation like this tonight. They're all five now with men in scoring position. Romo and Jansen in the Dodger pen. Kenley possibly with a tie, or the Dodgers happen to get a two-run homer and go ahead for sure, Kenley. And Romo, if they're down. Or tied. PK's gone deep once tonight. It's this one off the end of the bat. That is a disappointing inning for the Dodgers. It began with a Turner double and then three consecutive pop ups and still a one run deficit. At LA is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. And by Jack in the Box. Try the double jack combo for just $4.99. Only at Jack in the Box. Back at Dodger Stadium in a 3-2 game with the Diamondbacks in front. 
on a Jake Lamb solo homer last inning off Chris Hatcher who's out there for his third inning of relief. Eight nine and one in the Arizona order it's Jeff Mathis first. Ball one. One and one. Had to be a pinch hitter. Ben Gonzalez and Peterson with the Dodgers in the bottom of the ninth. Fernando Rodney has pitched back to back days for Arizona. He is the closer. See if he goes for a third day in a row. That's low and away, and it's two and one. And Rodney is beginning to warm, so it looks like he will get the call for the ninth inning. And it'll be three left handed hitters that he'll see. Either Utley or Tolls to start the inning. And then Adrian, then Jack. A 2 1, 2 and 2. With the exception of the home run allowed to Jake Lamb, Chris Hatcher's been pretty good. Sure has. And a 2 1 breaking ball right there in the past. He gets backed into fastball counts, and that's what he comes with. He tries to throw 95 by you or hit a spot, but he can use those secondary pitches to climb back into counts and then do that. That's a pretty good sequence coming back from a, a tough pitcher's count. Follow LA Dodger Baseball Live with MLB.com at bat, mobile app, stay connected to games, best players of all season long with game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcast stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. It's your number one app for live baseball. We've always got it on here in the booth. We sure do. A lot of different uses. Chris Herman, pinch hitting. With the base is empty and one out in the ninth. That's how I looked up Rob Segadin's spring training numbers. Hit 406 down in spring training with three home runs. Got a little place there you can pick which season you want the stats or even spring training, playoffs, postseason. But also, if you have an interest in StatCast and the StatCast yeah. data, you can get that in real time. A little bit hard to find. I'll tell you how in a sec. Ground ball, foul, and it's 0 2. So when you pull up a game on the app, and if you've used the app, you can picture the screen that comes up with the box scores or the pitch by pitch. But if you click the feed tab, that has all the stat cast data as far as exit velocity and on home runs, launch angles, and distance. Hatcher home with an 0 2. And Herman barely gets a piece to stay alive. So the Chris Hatcher, I just clicked feed. The Chris Hatcher strikeout was 93.8 miles an hour. It was a four seamer. I'm going to be out of a job soon. Right, and then get everything you're telling us. <laughs> Same with me, though. They're telling you who the hitter is. One and two. This would be a very disappointing series split. The Dodgers can't come up with a way to come from behind in the bottom of this inning. And we've got the first place Rockies coming in tomorrow. But you like the lineup coming up in the bottom of the ninth against Rodney. Again, it'll be likely either Tolls or Utley and Gonzalez and Peterson.
Chris Hatcher pitching more than two innings for only the fourth time in his career. He's done it now once each of the last four seasons. And he's got back to back K's to open the nine. Split finger right there that really dives. Great arm speed. Very deceptive when you keep that arm speed, release it out front, and then the ball just seems to like not get there. Diamondbacks fans, no doubt, happy seeing what Pollock's done tonight. He was two for his previous 32 coming in. And three of four here in the series finale. Strike one. Good work by the Dodger bullpen tonight, even though they're on the hook for the loss right now. That's pulled sharply past Seeger and the left, the two out base hit for Pollock. And if Hatcher is able to finish off this inning, that would be 15 innings, and he's not going to finish the inning. But if Avilan comes in and finishes it off with no more runs, it'd be 15, 15 innings over the last three days with just two runs allowed. The best earned run average in the National League over the first two weeks of this season. And it'll be up to Avilon to keep it right here at 3-2 in the ninth. Luis Avilan's changeup has always been his best pitch, but his fastball location has continued to improve, and so has his breaking ball. And I think his confidence is starting to go through the roof. With all the ups and downs he had last year, to make the team out of spring training, to have a good spring training, and then to get off to this hot start. He's really starting to grow before our very eyes. David Peralta. So the top two in the Diamondbacks order tonight, a combined seven of nine between Pollock and Peralta, two guys that were 0 for 17 to open the series. Saw Chase Huntley in the Dodger dugout, perhaps he'll lead off the bottom of the ninth. Perhaps it'll be Tolls. For sure it'll be Gonzalez and then Peterson. That's a base hit to right. 
Puig racing for the corner to get it. It gets all the way to the base of the wall, and Peralta's got an RBI triple to give Arizona some insurance. That's the first hit allowed this year by a Dodger left-handed reliever to a left-handed hitter in 27 at-bats. Peralta, they're shifted all the way around. Yasiel Puig was in right center. That's why it takes him so long to get this ball. He hustled. He ran as far as far as he could and as fast as he could. And so this ball, even though it is to the right of Adrian Gonzalez and not directly down the line, a long way to run Jake away from Lamb. the data normally that Peralta, where he hits the ball. They intentionally walk Goldschmidt. So eight hits from the top two in the Diamondbacks order tonight. It gets the engine going. The intentional walk gets a lefty lefty matchup for Avilan. And Jake Lamb whose home run broke the 2 2 tie in the eighth inning. Strike one. Eight of the ten hits. That just gets the engine going, but was the engine. Good stop, Grandall. Peralta looming down at third, and it's one and one. One run lead going into the ninth. Didn't seem that bad to face Fernando Rodney. Two it's starting to get there. And if this third one gets in on third, almost feels insurmountable. It's one and two on Lamb. Rodney's ready to go. Mike Fetter is an old Dodger down there as the bullpen coach standing next to Fernando Rodney. Two and two. Goldschmidt will take second. And you talk about this being. If the score holds a huge disappointment to split this series on the other hand it almost makes Arizona's road trip go from being a disaster to a success. Two on with two out and a two two from Avilon. Full count on land. Be careful now at first base open. And Yasmani Tomas on deck. Even though Tomas is a right handed hitter, Avilan better against righties than he is against lefties with that change up of his. And he gets Lamb to finish the inning. For the mountain a little bit taller. Either Utley or Tolls likely to lead off the inning. Then Gonzalez. Then Peterson. Back for the night.
Stave in as many tries, but three for three in save opportunities and somehow has an ERA above 10. Make that four for four in save opportunities and somehow the ERA looks like that. That reads cardiac closer. It might get the job done, but it's going to be tough, and the Dodgers are going to try and make it tough on them. That insurance run that Arizona just got makes this inning feel a little tougher, but you're going to see some left-handed hitters, and I think it's going to be in the right order as far as what Dave Roberts wants. It's not like he's scratching the surface looking for talent. He's sending up there high-quality starting players. Andrew Toll. Isaac didn't play here today, but are playing now. So Toll's the lead it off, then Gonzalez, then Peterson, then back to the top. No longer in a situation in a one-run game where one mistake from Rodney changes the night. It's going to take more. Tolls will try to start that process. Rodney home with the first one, and Tolls takes ball one. Just dipped out of the zone at the last moment. He's hit three homers this year. Leadoff hitter against right-handed pitching. And he lines one to center, hangs up for Pollock. First baseman number 23, Adrian Gonzalez. So one gone, and up comes Gonzalez. Dodgers led this game 2-0 after four, but the Diamondbacks tied it with two against McCarthy in the fifth, both coming with two outs. And then have added single runs in the eighth and in the ninth. Strike one. Adrian's one for one, pinch hit single in the seventh inning. Dodgers had the leadoff man on each of the last two innings, but then went one, two, three. Ball on a strike. One and two now. Loss would be the fifth against the left handed starter. Five of the team's seven losses, if that were to be the case. And two more lefties coming in this homestand Kyle Freeland tomorrow, Tyler Anderson on Wednesday. Rodney's 1 2. The jam shot foul will do it again. Dodgers came home from the road 500 and everybody's like okay what's going on it's like well it's just a portion of the season and then you win the first two games of the homestand that you're here for six and you're like okay now they're going to hit their stride a little bit here early in the season but it's feeling like a little bit of a flat tire around turn three. Adrian stays alive still a ball and two strikes. He can get on. Jock Peterson would represent the tying run. And it's the top of the order. Another one, two. And he got it. Dodgers down to their last opportunity here in the ninth. Center fielder, number 31. Fernando Jock Rodney's Peterson. patented changeup right there. Struck out his only time up there. Swing and a miss, strike one at 96. Off of the outside part. Trying to keep it extended for Logan Forsyth. Outside, ball one. Rodney is dialed in as we've seen him in his three appearances in this series. 
Gave up a three run homer to Puig two days ago. It was all over the place. And it was interesting last night. The 1 1. 1 and 2. And they're down to their final strike. Tori Lovello, first year manager of the Diamondbacks, has them a strike away from a 9 and 5 start. And an upside down National League West a couple of weeks into this season. Rockies in first, Diamondbacks in second. A one, two, three, ninth inning for Fernando Rodney. And the Diamondbacks win the final two games of this series to salvage a four game split. Really a, a rough loss. Pitching did a solid job. Offense just didn't fire in all cylinders. That double by Justin Turner to lead off the eighth and then in four pitches later there were three outs all on pop ups that just didn't feel real good at the end of this game. Our Lexus play of the game comes from Jake Lamb his tie breaking home run in the eighth inning and the first pitch that Chris Hatcher threw in that inning and an otherwise solid few innings of relief work for Hatcher. Dodgers are back at 500 at 7 and 7 tomorrow. It's the Rockies in town to begin a two game series for all and Alana and the rest of our crew. Joe Davis saying so long. Stay tuned after the game for Access Sportsnet brought to you by your Southern California Nissan dealers.